Today, I just feel like making a casual bookbinding video. I just got some craft paper I want to try out, and I want to experiment using postcards as book covers, which will be going out to my monthly mail patrons. Anyone who signs up for this tier on my Patreon will be getting the cherry print and the dragon fruit print postcards, along with a couple of stickers. So if you're interested, I will put that link down below. Here's my setup for the covers and pages. I'm using 15 sheets of this letter size craft paper and one sheet of cardstock. Then I cut all the paper in half to make a smaller size book. I'll be gluing the postcards to the cardstock, so for the end signatures, I'm using just three sheets of the craft paper and then one piece of that green cardstock. Then folding them in half to make a signature and pressing down the folded edge because this paper is a little thick. I repeated that with the other piece of cardstock to make the front and back signatures for the postcard covers. For the rest of the pages, I made a standard signature, which is four sheets grouped together, folded in half. Now I have a total of eight signatures. For the covers, I decided to make the postcard flush with the edge of the signature since I'm not trimming them, and that left a little bit of a green border or a margin on the left side. I'm okay with that. It also leaves a sliver of white on the edge, but I'm also okay with that. I'm using a piece of washi tape to mark where I want the postcard to be glued, just so I have everything straight. And using my extra strength glue stick, I put that onto the cardstock and then a little bit on the edge of the postcard and glued it in place. I repeated this process with the other postcard cover, and when they were all dry, I realized I need to trim the height, so I want it to be the same height as all the pages. I trimmed both covers, and now I can move on to making the binding holes. I'm using a punching guide, but you can also use an awl and measure out the holes any way you'd like. For convenience, I like to mark out where the holes will be going with an erasable marker on this guide, and then I just wipe it off when I'm done. I added those three folded sheets back into the cover signature, and pierced through the front and back cover signatures just like I did the other ones. And now all the pages are ready for binding. Something I wanted to share with you guys, I've been using embroidery mesh to practice bookbinding stitches. It's actually really useful for practicing if you're a beginner and you don't want to waste paper. I tried out this binding and it's kind of a combo of a double needle French link stitch. I'm sure there's a name for it, but honestly I don't know what it's called, but this is the binding I want to do. I'll be using waxed pink thread and two binding needles, one on each end. Since the needles will be hanging from my project, I don't want them to fall off the thread, so something I'm doing this time is turning the needle toward the tail of the thread and piercing it through, and then pulling all the thread toward the eye of the needle so it sort of creates a knot. Starting with the postcard and signature, I'm going to enter both needles from the outside to the inside in the center holes. And then return the left and right needle through the next outside holes, keeping an even amount of thread on each side. So the end signature looks like this, and now I'm going to go into a new signature. Doing the same step on each side. Then the left needle will come back to the outside, and also the right needle. I left that long center thread a little loose because now both needles are going behind it and then they are going to crisscross each other. Starting with the right needle, I pulled it behind that thread and then returning it back into 
the left side of the signature and doing the same thing with the left needle. Everything is always going behind the center threads and then looping back into that new signature. Once you get going, it's a lot less complicated than it sounds. And when they cross over, it creates this interesting gathering weave of threads. And then following where the next binding hole is, pulling the needle back out. And on the ends, I'm going to make a kettle stitch. So looping behind the thread below, and then loop behind that thread. And this is considered a traditional kettle stitch. And I'm going to repeat that on the other side, making a kettle stitch with the other needle. Now moving on to a new signature, and I'm going to repeat that whole process. Starting with the left needle, returning it to the outside, and doing the same thing with the other needle on the right side. Then pulling it behind that gathering of thread and pulling it back up to crisscross into a new signature. Repeating that with the other needle, going behind the gathering of thread to loop up into that new signature. Then returning the needles to the outer sections to make that kettle stitch. And from here, it's repeating the same process into new signatures. When I reach the signature with the postcard cover, it's no different. It's going into it from both sides using both needles, returning to the outside to go behind that gathering of threads, and then crisscross the threads to go back into the signature. And then I tie both threads off in a knot on the inside of the signature. I am curious to see how the postcard covers hold up. I think it's a good weight for this type of binding. It's thicker than cardstock, but thinner than board, so it's not as much stress on the hinge. Also curious to see how this craft paper holds up. I did notice some sheets started to warp a little, but honestly I don't know much about the grain of this paper, so we'll see how it holds up. It's not quite cardstock, but it's thicker than standard paper. If you've done my French link stitch video or my double needle Coptic stitch, you could definitely get this. I think it was just the same difficulty level as those two bindings. And similar to those, it will help your book lay flat, which I always love about exposed bindings. And honestly, I just experimented with this. I don't know what this binding is called. I'm pretty sure I didn't just invent something. Uh, if you know the name of it, let me know in the comments below. Either way, I liked making this and I want to try it on another book. And if you try this, I would love to see pictures of your book projects. Share it with me on my social links. Also a big thanks to my studio support members and patrons. If you want to support this channel and support more nerdy bookbinding videos, check out the Patreon and membership links in the description below. And of course, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell so you get notified when I post new videos. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!